the terrain doesn't allow for it. The good news is that we have a large air support dropping fire retardant and four helicopters. They're dropping water on the fire as we speak. This is a huge um, point of celebration for us from this morning's press conference when it looked like it was going to be tough for us to get some uh, air support here, but we, we got it. Um, the four helicopters the four helicopters are uh, getting the water from Chatfield Reservoir and uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife has closed Chatfield Reservoir to recreational um, activity today for these, this uh, ability for the... Do we want to pick that up? The duct tape said it's too hot. Of course that was mine. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I would think. Um, yeah. Hold it. Chatfield Reservoir is closed today to for um, let's go again. Chatfield Reservoir is closed today for water activity, uh, so the four helicopters can go in and out, uh, refilling their buckets with water and, and not have a safety issue with people out skiing and fishing. Um, firefighters are working hard to keep the fire out of the neighborhoods, and so far they've been successful. It's all been in the open land. No structures have been lost. We've had no injuries. If it does get into the neighborhoods, we will go from trying to suppress the fire to protecting the structures. So that's where we're at with that. Um, Dakota Ridge High School Evacuation Center has grown in attendance. We have over 50 people there and uh, seven or eight dogs and cats are there. We uh, encourage people to use the evacuation uh, center there in the gym and they are encouraged to bring their cats and dogs. If they do, they're asked to bring a leash and a crate if they have one for their animals. The larger animals have been pretty uh, active going to uh, Jeffco. sheep, um, geese, and I think there might even be a pig in there. So uh, people are welcome to bring those uh, animals there as well. So are any questions I can answer you for you. You talked about going from suppression to protection in the neighborhoods. How far is the most aggressive fire line from the neighborhoods now and which neighborhoods? Uh, I will be very blunt. Um, every neighborhood in this facility is at risk. This fire is is not an easy fight. The terrain is treacherous. It is very steep. Uh, as we talked this morning, there's there's just like you have in a mountain. There's debris. There's fallen trees. There's all the things that the firefighters have to fight. But it is really steep and it's loose and it's rocky. And there's also um, rattlesnake gulch that's in the middle of this. And it's not called that to be a cute name. It's because it is. Um, prone to have a large population of rattlesnakes. So you have that activity that the firefighters have to, to look for as well. Uh, every neighborhood in there uh, is in a situation that we need to get this fire out. So there's not one per se that is in immediate danger, they all are. How many neighborhoods, Mark? In total in there? At I don't know. I, I know that there's uh, five that we have evacuated. There are two that we have um, in pre-evacuation, uh, but I don't know how many total there are in this area. Is it too early to tell where it may have started and which way it spread? Well, we, we had a deputy this morning who was the one who found it. He was doing um, uh, patrol work in open, uh, open areas of Jeffco in there and came across a fire that was about 10 foot by 10 foot. We know right where it started. Uh, and it within an hour of that, it was at 50 acres. Is it suspicious? The investigation hasn't even begun yet, but I think any time that you see a, a small fire in the middle of that, in an area like that uh, at 9 o'clock at night, it makes you scratch your head a little bit.
So just on that note, I spoke to a resident over at the school here who said that basically a rumor was in the neighborhoods that over the last couple of years there were fires set, his words, by environmentalists who wanted to push wildfire issues. Uh, I'm curious if you have any evidence of past arsons in the area that were concerning and if there is any sort of outreach for misinformation or otherwise that you guys are doing right now. Um, I know nothing of that history. Okay. I'm not saying that that's not in existence. Um, have not look, looked into that. I'm sure they will be digging into every fire that's been in this area uh, for the past several years at least, uh, but no knowledge of that. Going back to the air support, uh, how big of a win is it considering there are so many resources with those other fires? What did those logistics look like to be able to get the four helicopters and the plane here? Well, I will tell you this morning, we were not that hopeful. We, uh, resources are very, very slim right now for fighting fire. We have 600 professional firefighters that live in Colorado that are out of state, that have de deployed to other big fires in the country. And then we have three fires happen in uh, Colorado, like uh, Larimer and Boulder, and now this one. So resources are slim. And then you've got, uh, to compete for the air resources that, that are working the two larger fires in this. Uh, we feel very fortunate and are grateful for the air support. It will make all the difference in the world. As I, I said, it's, this terrain is not conducive to ground fighting the fire. I don't know how successful we would be, even with all the great efforts these, these firefighters do uh, in these conditions. It could have been a tough fight, and we're, we're still in the woods. We still got a long way to go, but at least we have the hope that the uh, fire retardant from a big tanker, and that's 10,000 gallons a drop, and then four uh, helicopters that are shooting to Chatfield back and forth, hopefully that will really get us a leg up today. There is no contention lines, nobody's putting No, we don't have any numbers yet on containment. Um, the, the two numbers that we're most excited about is that we have not lost a structure and we've not had a firefighter injured so far. How do you expect the weather this afternoon and the night is going to affect the It fire? doesn't help. 98 degrees never helps in a wildland firefight. Um, the weather is just not, again, just like the train, the weather is not conducive to a ground fight either. Um, air support is probably where we uh, where we need to be. Ground support, no. Um, we're, we're fighting this fire with about 70, 75 sets of boots on the ground. We would much rather have a couple hundred, uh, but we have what we have, so, and and they're they're really getting after it out there. But um, no, we're not where we want to be. Will we be getting more, or is this, it? is this what we have? This is what we probably will have. It's just not there. And with the big other, the two other big fires we're fighting, you know, we're all got to share. Has anyone reached out to the governor's office about activating the <laughs> National Guard's helicopter unit? Not that I'm aware of. You know, with, we got four helicopters here. You know, I think we're probably where we need to be. I know you said something about no firefighter injuries. We got some sort of word that a firefighter may have had a seizure of some sort. Is that? I have not heard that. Okay. I have not heard that. Are you Carol? doing return as well or just one? The big uh, tanker that we have is doing a $10,000 retard, $10,000. The big tanker we have is doing a 10,000 gallon uh, retardant drop and the four helicopters are doing water. Mark, do you think that, I know that you said it would be hard to get help, but do you think it came because of the great risk to all the homes? Because of all the fires burning right now, it looks like this one is closest to the most homes in the it, state. It could have played a, a, a contributing, it could have been a contributing factor. I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that are considered with the different uh, incident commanders and, and with the, the suppliers for the helicopters and the uh, retardant uh, planes as to where they need to put their efforts. We did see some video from the, from the air of some crews on the ground. Do you have some trying to fight the fire on the ground, like with shovels? And oh, yeah. Yeah, on? we've got about 70, 75 firefighters on the ground that are working this fire. Uh, but as I said when I started, that terrain is not conducive to a ground fight. It's not a fight you're going to win. Uh, we can make a dent, hopefully, but with only 75 sets of boots on the ground on that terrain, that's a tough fight, man. Can you describe what they're trying to do? What we saw them was working some kind of, uh, I don't know if it was axes or you know, 
brush cutters or they, what do they do? They could be cutting fire line. They could be clearing debris. Um, it all depends on what particular thing they were trying to accomplish in that particular area. I know some um, people who live up here at the evacuation center, they were telling me that they're not surprised that a fire happened here because mitigation efforts are, are few and far between and there's a lot of dead trees in the area. I guess I don't know if there are active ongoing mitigation efforts in the trees. I do not know. Uh, that's out of our scope. Now, I don't know what their, their plan is or how they go about that. Marcus, I've done fire staging at the school. Do you know what they're up to today? I do not. Okay. Hopefully they're helping us fight this fire. I don't know. No. We've been listening to Mark Techmeyer with the Jeffco Sheriff's Office uh, describing the current status of the quarry fire. That fire is now coming up on 15 hours old. It is, of course, Wednesday, and now for the past three days, we've been talking about fires in Colorado, three major fires that are burning within 80 miles of one another. On Monday, we started with the Alexander Mountain Fire that was just west of Loveland. Then the Stone Canyon Fire fired up yesterday, uh, just north of Lyons in the afternoon. And now we had this one in Jefferson County, just to the west of Chatfield State Park uh, near Deer Creek Canyon Park. And as uh, Mark Techmeyer was describing, uh, they only have about two miles to go to find Chatfield Reservoir and find the water they need. That's why they've closed it to recreation uh, uh, for the day so that they could get uh, as much water as they need as easily as they can without putting anyone in any danger. But uh, that certain sounded like some good news today uh, after the early morning briefing from Mark Techmeyer. He was very concerned about the development of that fire through the day. Now, several hours later, he really appears that those uh, air support, uh, the air support they're getting is making a big difference, that large uh, fixed wing slurry bomber, as well as those four helicopters. Our own Evan Krugel is there just to the north at Ken Carl and 470, roughly giving us an update on what he's seeing there. Evan, give us the latest. Yeah, Tom, this is where many of those evacuated families have been watching the fire from this morning. You can see it quickly growing to the west as it moves up that canyon. Firefighters attacking this fire from the air, saying they're having a really tough time getting to it to fight it on the ground. Step out of the way to give you a live look. You just heard Mark Techmeyer say it bluntly. Simply put, with all the fires going on right now, he said they do not have the resources here that they would like to have on this fire. About 70, 75 firefighters, he says they would like to have a lot more. Unfortunately, they do not have it, so they're dealing with what they have, and that means a relentless air assault. We have seen multiple helicopters, including the state's new helicopter out here, lifting water from small ponds, also a number of tankers dropping retardant, not only on the west side, but also up the canyon. Now, from this vantage point, it is pretty tough to see exactly how far up the canyon this fire is stretching. Uh, but as we just heard from Mark, two new neighborhoods now on pre-evacuation notice, and those same five neighborhoods from this morning do remain on full evacuation notice. Those, uh, again, are the Deer Creek, Mesa, Sampson, Maxwell, McKinney and Murphy subdivisions, uh, and then again, those two new pre-evacuations. We've seen folks here who have been here since as early as 2 o'clock this morning. Uh, again, we're pretty close to Ken Carl and 470, just to give you a good look as we're looking south towards this fire. Winds here have been pushing this fire to the west up the canyon, and those winds were pretty calm a couple of hours ago, Tom, but we've seen them pick up here a little bit in the past hour or so as another tanker comes in potentially here to do another Another drop on this fire. Folks here uh, uh, who have been evacuated, uh, there you go, seeing that air tanker drop another uh, load of retardant on this fire. Folks here, uh, a lot of them uh, pretty nervous, a lot of them pretty calm, simply saying there's nothing they can do at this point other than let firefighters do their job, but certainly tense moments out here. Uh, as Tom mentioned, some good news uh, so far. No structures have been lost. No firefighters have been injured, but we did hear Mark mention just how difficult that terrain is. And uh, we're hearing also tons of rattlesnake issues up there that they're having to look out for um, as they move in and try to fight this fire. So certainly not an easy situation. Uh, fire officials say at this point we're looking at about 200 acres, but they say no doubt this fire will grow. Um, how big remains to be seen, but that's obviously something they will be working on today. One other thing to mention, he said, even neighborhoods that have not been evacuated, essentially Mark said, every single neighborhood in this vicinity does remain at risk at this point, uh, simply because of how strong this fire is 
and how quickly it has been growing this morning. We've seen a lot of torching out here, uh, big trees going up in flames behind us and uh, mostly white smoke, which is of course indicative of no structures, just those timbers and grasses burning, but it is really hot out here and just a little bit of wind, certainly not what firefighters were hoping for. The good news, they are getting that air attack that they were not anticipating this morning. We have seen that relentlessly over the past couple of hours. That's expected to continue throughout the day. Reporting live near Ken Carl, Evan Krugel, 9 News. All right, Evan, thanks. Uh, we just saw over your shoulder as you were describing that super tanker that Mark Techmeyer was telling us about. Uh, 10,000 gallon drops, but that means it has to go and get 10,000 gallons and then return. And you think of the wear and tear on these pilots flying all these missions now for three days, both uh, with those fixed wing and those helicopters as well. Yeah, Tom, and that's the thing is they've got a number of aircraft out here, so it seems like every few minutes we're seeing something happen on the fire. In fact, uh, they can go to Chatfield, which is just uh, to the southeast of here, and then there's another little pond here just north of the fire uh, that we've seen helicopters coming uh, to scoop up water from and then drop it on hot spots essentially over here. So the good news is, yeah, you've got uh, only limited uh, resources, but, but we have seen them kind of cycle in and out, so they're certainly getting a number of aircraft on the fire, both water and retardant here this morning. All right, Evan, thanks very much. Of course, that is playing out right now in the southwest metro Denver area, but about 70 miles to the north. The update today on the Stone Canyon fire was not a good one because it involved one fatality. They did find a body inside of one of five burned buildings that the fire started yesterday that was just north of Lyons. And then, of course, there is the Alexander Mountain fire. That was the first one to start burning this week, a large fire now over 5,000 acres, 0% containment just to the west of Loveland. Now, in about an hour, Governor Polis is expected to address the state's response. He's in Loveland or will be in Loveland. Uh, we'll be carrying that for you live and of course we'll continue to keep you abreast of everything involving these three major fires burning right here on 9 News and on the 9 News app. It's also available at 9news.com. We'll see you then.